so let's see first of all what are the structures formed by mesonephric duct mesonephric duct is a very important duct in our body because it forms male external genitalia along with that it forms renal excretory system i'm not saying kidney i'm saying renal excretory system should be very clear cut in your mind remember it via clear cut only so renal excretory system constitutes collecting tubule calyces ureter and trigone remember it via clear cut so what does it forms it forms collecting tubule somewhere here then it forms calyces then it forms ureter and then the trigone so this is all is formed by mesonephric duct what does it forms in male reproductive system remember it by sieve so sieve it stands for seminal vesicle epididymis vas deferens and ejaculatory duct remember sieve all of you must have seen sieve at your home so this is what it is for so what does it forms it forms seminal vesicle it forms epididymis it forms vas deferens and somewhere here ejaculatory duct so all this is formed by mesonephric duct let's get back to the question again which of these is not formed by mesonephric duct bladder trigone of course it forms remember clear cut vas deferens ejaculatory duct definitely it forms vas deferens and ejaculatory duct it does not form lower one third of vagina exactly so what is it that forms vagina another question based on hsg identify the finding seen in this hsg our options are bilateral hydrocelpings extravasation into venous system normal hsg or bilateral corneal block so let's read this hsg what do we see again there is one cannula one cervix uterus also seems to be normal compare with the normal uterine cavity is more or less normal what is the abnormality the tubes the tubes are definitely dilated another thing the contrast is filling the tube so contrast is able to enter inside the tube it means cornua of the uteruses are normal but there is no peritoneal spillage so the contrast is not leaving the tube it means somewhere block is there in the fimbrial end of the tube so it is a case of hydrocelpings so our question was identify the finding it is a case of bilateral hydrocelpings definitely not a normal hsg now since they have asked about other these two options let's see what they look like on hsg so what is this compare with the normal again normal cannula one vagina one cervix one normal uterus what you cannot see is the tubes so contrast has not even entered the tubes it means the block is somewhere at the cornua so it is a picture of bilateral cornual block okay next is this hsg again compare with the normal so it has one vagina uterus seems normal again you cannot see the tubes this is not tube tube looks like a single thread like structure this multiple lacy structure is not tube tubes you cannot see might be it is again a bilateral corneal block then what is this this is venous extravasation what is extravasation actually is extravasation is leakage of fluid out of the container this is what is exactly happening here the contrast instead of going into the tubes it's leaking into the myometrial vessels or lymphatics that leads to extravasation and that is how it looked like on so hsg now let's start with the evaluation of a patient if patient comes to in opd with secondary amenorrhea first and foremost thing is rule out pregnancy always that i have told you in previous class also whenever patient is sexually mature always rule out pregnancy first then what do you want to know now you want to know the estrogen status of the body how we were doing that in primary amenorrhea we were checking the secondary sexual characters but here she is a case of secondary amenorrhea so she must be having the secondary sexual characters how will we judge the current estrogen status by doing progesterone challenge test in this progesterone challenge test we give progesterone pills to the patient and see whether the patient bleeds or does not bleed right along with that we do serum tsh and prolactin why because these two endocrinal disorders are very common cause of amenorrhea and very easily treatable so we just do these blood test on the first encounter coming to the progesterone challenge test 
in progesterone challenge test if patient bleeds it means patient's estrogen level in the body is normal it is good. So, what the patient is lacking? Patient is lacking progesterone and that is what you are giving. So, why is patient lacking progesterone? When is the progesterone formed in the body? It is formed after ovulation by corpus luteum. It means patient is not ovulating. So, it is a case of anovulation. In the case of anovulation, we know the causes. We mainly we have to exclude three causes and that is PCOS, the most common cause, congenital adrenal hyperplasia and Cushing syndrome. Besides other causes, we have to evaluate for these causes most importantly. Then if patient does not bleed, it means patient lacks estrogen in the body. So, do one thing, give her estrogen. So, we have given her estrogen pill. Now, let us see whether she bleeds or not. If she does not bleed even now, it means there is no problem in the hormones. You have given estrogen, you have given progesterone, still she is not bleeding. It means the defect lies in the uterine lining now. It is a case of Asherman syndrome, right. So, if after giving estrogen, patient starts bleeding, it means patient was lacking estrogen, right. So, it means gonads are not working properly. The cause could be central or cause could be in the ovary itself. How to differentiate? You already know by doing gonadotropin levels. By that we will know whether it is hypergonadotropic or hypogonadotropic, right. So, what the gonadotropins will tell us? You know this slide, right. If FSH LH is high, it is a case of ovary failure and to further evaluate that, you will do karyotype. If FSH LH is low, it is a central cause either in hypothalamus or pituitary and for that you will do CT scan and MRI. In irregular shedding, also called as Halban disease, very important, has been asked in exam, Halban disease is irregular shedding. So, what is happening? See, the corpus luteum forms after ovulation. Who is the savior of this corpus luteum? It is LH. So, LH is the savior of corpus luteum. When after the luteal phase ends, once the luteal phase starts ending, the LH goes. As a result, corpus luteum starts become atretic. But what is happening in Halban disease is, this LH persists. So, the main pathology of Halban disease is persistent LH, which does not goes away. As a result, the corpus luteum also does not become atretic, it stays and it keeps on secreting progesterone. This progesterone which was supposed to fall in the end of the cycle, it goes on secreted. Then as a result, when progesterone estrogen falls in the end of cycle, FSH starts rising and starts the new cycle. But here, progesterone is persistent, so FSH levels will not rise, they will keep on decreasing. As a result, remember this cycle here. When the progesterone was falling, the FSH was rising here, FSH was rising. As a result, the follicle cohort was starting to mature. Now, since FSH has not risen enough, the follicles that will mature will be not much in amount, not good in quality. So, follicular maturation is affected. As a result, what will happen? The endometrium, which was formed by the estrogen released by follicles, will not be a good endometrium because the follicles being recruited are not good, are less, estrogen is less, the endometrium which starts forming here is a weak one, right. So, when you do a histopathology here, what do you find? So, because of lack of estrogen, what happens? This kind of endometrium forms a wall without much bricks. So, what happened? How the patient will present? Menses have stopped here next cycle has started, but the next cycle wall is really weak one. So, patient will have spotting. The spotting once the menses have stopped, menses stopped, but due to a weak wall, due to less estrogen, patient will keep having the spotting. This is how patient presents. Spotting even after menses because of this kind of endometrium formed. And if you will do histopathology somewhere here, because patient is having spotting, what will you find that you will find that since the estrogen is not sufficient and progesterone is persistently being secreted, the histopathology will characteristically show proliferative plus secretory endometrium both. Otherwise, normally here we should have only the proliferative histopathology, but we will have proliferative plus secretory. The treatment, treatment of Halban's disease is one and that is NSAIDs. 
For Helmet's disease, the treatment is NSAIDs.